This is the oldest pair of jeans in the world. If you look at it from the front, it, doesn't it look like just a really cool finished pair of jeans you could wear today? That's what I love about these, is you could walk down the street in this pair of jeans today, no one would know that they're 135 years old. Mm. But if you walk down the street wearing men's clothing from 1879, people would say, where is the costume party? Let's spend How many pairs of jeans have you come across today? In the subway, at school, in the street, in restaurants, movie theaters, or at work? It's impossible to say. It's said there are up to seven pairs of jeans per person in the world. The U.S. produces about 450 million of them a year. And you're bound to have at least one pair of your own in your closet. A veritable craze has swept our planet, our faded blue planet. Jeans were born in the 19th century and are now striding into a new millennium with undying insolence. They are manufactured cheaply in third world factories to flood the markets in developed countries. Having once symbolized industrialization, they have now become a reflection of globalization and the entire world economy fits neatly into their five pockets. Yet jeans are a mass of defects. They sag after a while, they fade, the legs twist around, the seams fray, and they bag at the knees. And in spite of all that, they embody modernity, comfort, and strength. They are worn by children, parents, and grandparents. And whether you're a star or just an average Joe, a king or a beggar, a pauper or all-powerful, slender or shapeless, you've all got your own jeans, which can't be said for any other item of clothing. At the end of the dusty road that stretched from San Francisco to the Arizona border. The year is 1873. For 20 years already, the Levi Strauss Company, founded by a German Jewish immigrant, had been supplying the general stores of the American West, where cowboys and miners bought their supplies. Levi Strauss was a wholesaler and sold everything from shovels, picks, lanterns, pots and pans and knives, to shoes, long johns, shirts and dungarees. The dungarees were usually made out of blue canvas, denim. Blue jeans haven't always been the shape they are today. They have shadowed the social and morphological evolution of their wearers. In the 1900s, they gained a fifth pocket on the backside. In the early 19th century, they were only worn with braces, and the loopholes for a belt only appeared in 1922. In 1926, the Lee brand fitted a zipper onto the fly of their jeans, which was quite revolutionary. The back buckle disappeared in the 1940s, and the rivets on the back pockets, which were scratching saddles, were tucked under the seams. The two watch pocket rivets were also subject to the vagaries of history. What? Jeans as museum exhibits? Like mummies? Or like the canvases of the Grand Masters? Is that the way they'll end up? As a vestige of the past? Is that the end of the road that began in 1873? So how is the future looking for jeans? In this virtual world that has no time for anything, that is only interested in youth and speed, what hope is there for something that's over a hundred years old? Fear not. Denim has always been highly adaptable, and the famous blue canvas has already taken over the World Wide Web. So you're still asking, why jeans? And we haven't really got an answer. Everyone has their own opinion, in the same way that everyone has their own favorite pair of jeans which are just like everybody else's, and yet, at the same time, totally different. But we won't end on such a quizzical note. We'll spill the beans. The secret of jeans is hiding in that little pocket, the pocket that no other trousers have ever had, the watch pocket. No, I've never used it. That's the first thing that goes. It's, it's, uh, that's what I put in my watch pocket. I put pills. Nothing. Reminders. I've got a sixth pocket. I don't put drugs in it, there's no good stuff around. A zippo lighter. A pick for my guitar. Coins. It's good to keep condoms in there too, you know. 
Top secret. That's how it should be. You know, I'm a rapper. I keep my CDs on me. And they slip right good in these pockets. I don't put anything in my watch pocket. You bet today I've got rivets in my pocket. However, if I had a vintage pocket watch, that's where I would put it. Japanese. A Japanese lucky charm. For good health and the family. So I won't tell you what I have in my pocket. You've got to dream a little. <laughs>